I just want to say that my life as a radio icon has been devoted to spreading love and harmony and peace to millions of people across the nation and across the world. Um, but in 2023, I had an unimaginable encounter two weeks ago in Buckhead here in Atlanta. And it is disheartening to see such blatant racism that it still exists today. And this encounter put a bit of focus on the reality for anyone patronizing any establishment could have the power to bless business or harm your business just through the influence of social media. You have no idea who is walking into your facility, into your establishment. Um, because at Atlanta is full of high simply low key and they just want to have a life. This particular day I just wanted the veggie cheese steak and I walked into Woody's and Buckhead and I placed my order and the employee took my order but he rinsed me as darky in in the system. So as I was paying and the screen popped up and I saw darky I asked him to change my name and just put an L just correct it because darky is insensitive to a black woman. He refused. So I asked him again. I said, could you just take, the, take that off, change the name? Could you correct it for me? He still refused. So at that point, I said, just forget the sandwich. Could you refund my money? And he still refused. And unfortunately, at this particular time, um, I, you know, I, as, as I do, I just kind of sat back and just thought about it. Like, how do you fix a situation like this? How can you fix this? And I've just kind of went back over, thank God for Google reviews and thank God for Yelp, because that's where our consumers will go and express themselves and to tell people, you know, about their poor experiences. And even with Yelp and Google reviews, it does not mean that an owner, a business owner or a manager is going to look at the reviews and see what it is that you have to say. Um, but gratefully, I had a platform to be able to bring attention to something that was already on Google review and Yelp about this particular facility. And had I seen that, I probably wouldn't have gone in the first place, but I did. But one of the things um, that I thought about is that the normal consumer doesn't have my platform. So one of the resolutions that I feel is very important for us, for everyone as consumers, is something that I've created in the midst. It's called the Right One, which is a social media platform that will allow consumers to post videos and post their experiences and it will also be a whistleblower to people that are racially and socially discriminatory against, pa uh, against their patrons. But it is also going to serve as a spotlight for businesses who are getting it right. So we will have forthcoming details about the Right One platform coming up at the top of the week. I do want to say that my attorneys and I, we got together and um, they asked me what I wanted to see. What I actually wanted to see is reconciliation because that's not what we get to see too many times in this society. You see publicists that will give you a, a blanket apology, but it doesn't get to the heart of the issue. I wanted to sit down with the management team, with the employee, with the attorneys of Woody's, with my team, and then my reconciliation team so that we could sit and talk through some resolution. They refused to sit down with us. Um, and I'm going to give it over to my attorney because he has been in contact. They refused a lot of things, but that leads us to where we are today. Thank you. Thank you. My name is James Walker. James, can you mic, excuse me? My name is James L. Walker, Jr., and along with Attorney Griggs, we have been advising um, Darlene, Ms. McCoy, and her husband here, who stand so bravely with her. I think it's very courageous for her to come forward. Many times people let these things happen and they just brush them under the rug and keep it moving because they don't want this kind of attention. She has been through a very traumatic experience here. If you've ever dealt with racism or a racial slur or any kind of racial discrimination, 
you understand the impact it, it has. And if you haven't, hopefully you never will. I have reached out to Woody several times. We tried to get them to A, meet with the NAACP. I have emails where I've said, will you meet with the NAACP? And I've never gotten a written response back to say, yes, we'll meet with the NAACP. We'll meet with others in the civil rights movement to help us better this. When you have a company that has numerous complaints like this, and I've read many of them, you can't just fix it internally. And one of the things they told us is they want to select the person to fix it. They want to select the team to come in and do diversity training and sensitivity training and all kind of different diversity inclusion efforts. We disagree with that. We agree with what Ms. McCoy just said, that Mr. Griggs and the NAACP and experts like that should be brought into the party and should be brought into the meeting so that it's done right. I don't want you to self-check yourself. I want you to let experts come in and hopefully fix this so we don't see another Darlene McCoy story. So they did not want to welcome that. As Darlene alluded to, they were very reluctant to meet with us. Sometimes I think these companies think they can write a check and this will all go away or they think they can just offer you something. This is bigger than that. We want to send a message to not just Buckhead, we want to send a message throughout the region, throughout the state, throughout the country that it's time's up. As Darlene said, they got the right one today. They got the right one. And we're going to give them some time that I'll let Attorney Griggs talk about, who I really appreciate you stepping in here um, and helping my client. I'm going to let him tell you kind of what our next steps will be. Thank you. And I just want to thank Darlene. I want to thank James uh, for allowing the Georgia State Conference and the NAACP to be a part of this. Um, when I first saw uh, the posting by Darlene that Friday, um, I saw it maybe 10 minutes after she posted it, and I texted Darlene and I said, however we can help. Darlene is a friend of mine, but this goes beyond our friendship. This is the birthplace of civil rights. This is the birthplace of the movement. And for a restaurant to think that a racial epithet is appropriate uh, has no place in this city, in this state. So as the president of the oldest civil rights organization, we reach out to Woody's. We welcome a conversation. Let's be clear. We started the diversity, equity, and inclusion business, so there's no one better than to have this conversation. And we look forward to engaging. We will give you seven days, seven days to reach out to the NAACP where we can set a meeting, we can have a conversation and come to some resolution that is satisfactory to Darlene and her family. But if in seven days you do not reach out to the NAACP, I have been empowered uh, by our executive committee and, and others that are in leadership uh, capacity at national uh, to use whatever means are necessary to bring Woody's into compliance with normal civility. And so, again, we look forward to engaging in a robust conversation with Woody's. And let's be clear, uh, we've dealt with this before in Buckhead whether that was Houston's twice and several other restaurants. So Woody's needs to take the initiative and reach out uh, because every single option is on the table, including direct action. And so we just want to make sure that the people of Atlanta, the citizens of Georgia understand that diversity is a strength in Georgia. It is the, um, it is the cause of the day. You know, when we see these attacks on diversity happening across the country, uh, we know the NAACP has stood at the forefront of every single movement to protect the rights of people of color, but particularly African Americans, and we would do the same thing uh, for, for Darlene and any African American uh, who feels that they have been racially discriminated. So again, to Woody's, the direct call is you have seven days to reach out to the Georgia State Conference to have a conversation about what happened to Darlene and what continues to be alleged on all of the review apps. I, I've read so many complaints that it's, it's concerning. Um, and again, in Buckhead, this is the third restaurant that we've heard that's had this issue. Uh, we need to address this. Again, this is the birthplace of civil rights. It's the birthplace of Dr. King. It's the birthplace of um, the civil rights movement. And so we have to be clear we don't accept racial discrimination in this city, in this state, and Woody's, you're on the clock. So I'll open the floor for any questions. Yeah, um, so I know there wasn't an official lawsuit, so after those seven days, is that further legal action? Is that kind of what you're insinuating by further all, steps? All options taken? are open. 
If I had my way, we might have filed suit already, but my client has said reconciliation is the spirit of her heart. So we took this press conference today to make one final, I guess you would say, olive branch reach yes. out. And the NOACP, you can obviously speak for the NOACP, but we, we feel there's no room for this. It's kind of a no-nonsense kind of situation. Now the owner, uh, Larry Scroll Channel 2, the owner has, I guess, told publicly that it was a language barrier from the employee and that mm -hmm. this was a mistake. Um, had you, has he apologized to, miss, to you, Ms. McCoy, or are you, do you accept that, that reasoning that it was a language barrier? Well, I, I did hear that, that that is what he said, but Darkie was spelled correctly. Um, my questions were, were spelled, but I asked him to change it. He refused. I told him how to spell my name, he refused. Um, but, you know, he also said that he's known this particular employee for a long time. And this employee has been referenced in other racial situations months before my situation. So I just don't buy it. And they also sent us a letter that was sent to Darlene of an apology with steps of what they're trying to do as far as diversity training. Um, I think it said something of giving a, a donation to a charity of your choice. Uh, have you received that letter? Yeah, we received the letter. I told you about the commentary. The problem is they ask if it's the letter. I haven't made, seen it, the one you've seen, but if it is the same letter. The problem with it is they want to select who trains their companies, their, their offices. Also, I note about the letter that they refused to address a very specific question, which was, will you meet with the end of ACP? As Attorney Griggs just said, they set the foundation for diversity and inclusion. This is the birthplace. Why would you send me a letter and not reference what I told you was the most important thing? And she wanted to sit down with them. He wanted the NOACP to sit with them. Did you see that addressed in the letter? It was not, but the, okay. the letter did say, uh, again, the training. So the piece, the letter was sent before you guys have already tried to have communication with them. So that came after the fact. Just trying to get the timeline. Uh, no, the letter came after we sent our letter over to them calling gotcha. for a meeting. Gotcha. And we never mentioned money in our letter, by the way. Gotcha. And I think the, the most important thing that Woody's has to, to realize is they're not the ones setting the standards. Um, you know, Darlene was harmed and, and she was called a racial epithet. Uh, so there's only really one organization that can address that level of discrimination and that would be the oldest civil rights organization in the country. And again, we're coming uh, with an olive branch here. We're reaching out to them. We're saying we're available. We will have a conversation. Um, but if they refuse after seven days, then we will partake in what the NAACP does best, and that's on all fronts. And, uh, and with you having uh, your platform, the right one that you want to allow people to be able to express, it, you know, things that happen to them, they don't have your platform, what is the message and how important is it for you to get that out to other businesses? Like, how important is that to you? Well, the, the message is this, is that people have a choice on where they spend their money. And I just feel like it's, it's straight up, it's just raggedy for you to have Yelp and Google to give you some information about um, the things that are happening within your facility and then you don't address it. So this is just another step, um, just another layer, but we are also highlighting great business who's getting it right. So um, it's important to me for our community to know where they can go and make a great choice in spending their money. I have two In Two questions, one for you, Ms. and then one for Mr. Grace. Uh, yes. Mr. Coy, can you explain to us uh, how you felt? Like, for those who do not understand the terminology darkie and what that means, how did that make you feel and, and why were you so upset when, when he called you that? Well, at first, I thought that it was a mistake. That I thought that. But then when I asked him to correct it, he, that it's the way that he refused, no, that is for me. And I, I couldn't believe it at first. I'm like, you just called me darky? Okay. So then I proceeded again and asked him to change it. He still would not change it. And I just felt humiliated. You know, at the first thing that I did was I called my husband. I said, I am about to scream. I was about to cry. And my husband said, no, calm down. He was my, he was my peacemaker back here. <laughs> he says, don't say anything. Calm down. Take it and walk out of the store and go live. That's all you could do at this point. So that's what I did. Mr. Griggs, you mentioned um, 
seven days, and you mentioned if, if they do not reach out to you other seven days, uh, what does that action look like? Are we talking about protests? Are we talking about marches, boycotts? What does that action look like? Remember Houston's. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. So every option is on the table. Um, and the thing about it is um, we didn't give Houston's this type of grace. Mm -hmm. Only because of the stature of who Darlene is and, and her uh, attempts to always bring joy and, and, and willingness and, and, and openness are we doing this. So we're giving Woody's an opportunity to be conciliatory, apologize, not to the media, but to Darlene and then to remedy the situation. Is that seven days as of starting today? Starting today. In a copy of the letter that was sent to our newsroom, it mentioned that this was an opportunity to reflect on the treatment of you and how they can reflect their policies, but you also mentioned that there were a number of incidents that came up as you were sharing your experience. In any of your communication with Woody's, was that at all referenced and did they attempt to address those, um, those incidents and... Oh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what they said. And I'm very disturbed that they would share a confidential letter with you. As you see, we didn't share any of our letters because we wanted her to have a chance to sit down with them. So we didn't want to grandstand. In the legal space, that's kind of grandstanding. If I'm negotiating with Attorney Griggs and we're sharing confidential letters that clearly say for purposes of settlement, which indicates that it's just that, for purpose of settlement. But since they did share with you, I will share, I will share with... Um, you my response to that question when I pointed that out to them the counsel for them told me how do we know those reviews are true how do we know that's not fabricated and I said to him well one of my partners and I we work in the restaurant space and we also represent a dozen restaurants I've never seen people take time to go write a Yelp review just because usually when they write it and we follow up on it it's true it's accurate they had that experience at one of our restaurants so he questioned whether or not the Yelp reviews were authentic, actually real, and somewhat tried to belittle what we saw day one. Day one, those reviews were up. So you could say maybe some of her friends, I doubt this happened, but you could allege some of her friends wrote Yelp reviews later. But the first night it happened, we saw all these bad reviews about this same waiter, about this same restaurant. So it can't be made up. They didn't know she was going to come forward and go live. So does that answer your question? Was there any discussion about disciplinary status uh, action or employment status? Was that mentioned in the letter? My heart is to fire the guy. Darlene's heart is that you reconcile and train the guy and maybe get him training so we don't put him back out there and have him do this at another restaurant. But it's my understanding they're not planning to terminate the gentleman at all from what I got from their counsel. Well, not necessarily termination, but they didn't discuss disciplinary action of any kind? Mm -mm, no. Okay. Are you seeking legal action or, or want to seek legal action? I'm going to see how the process plays out with Attorney Griggs and the NOACP, but we are ready to go. We have documents ready, we have a team ready, and if we have to file, we're prepared to file. And right now the only form of communication you guys have got from them in reluctance to have a meeting is that letter? Correct. I put it on email purposefully, will you meet with the NOACP? There was no response to that email. And since they are sharing, you're welcome for me to share that email with you since they are sharing. Wow. So um, as we've said, the ball is in Woody's court. They have seven days. Our phones work, our emails work, uh, our social media works. They can get in touch with us on all uh, forms of communication. Uh, and the Georgia State Conference is very serious about this. When we heard an African-American female was referred to as a darkie uh, in 2023, um, it took us back to a time, whether that's 1823 or 1923, and the message that we want to respond to Woody's is, this is 2023, you are in Atlanta, uh, the black Mecca. You should not be disrespecting an African American woman like that. So you have seven days. My personal feelings aside, mm -hmm. is there any possible conceivable <laughs> way that that, that, that that was a typo? <laughs> Well, here's the problem. Somebody alluded to he has a language barrier. You, why have a servant or, or a waiter serving people if you know he has a language barrier? I mean, it just, I don't know about you guys, but that makes no sense to me. If I'm in a community like Atlanta, which you have affluent black folks and not affluent coming to Buckhead day in and day out eating, why would you have somebody there who linguistically and verbally and English-wise is not able to even communicate, you know, smoothly 
uh, when you're running a professional business. I, I just can't understand that. And here's the thing, and I think Darlene covered it. He, once she thought it was a mistake, she attempted to correct him, he doubled down. Exactly. It's for me. Exactly. That shows comprehension and understanding and then an intent to continue. So I, I understand people may say that, uh, but if you double down on something, you generally intended to say it. And the owner doubled down that night when he went public before Mr. Griggs and I got involved, the owner doubled down too and standing with the employee even after he heard the whole story. He went on TV and still tried to justify it. I didn't see any remorse. I didn't see any level of real contrition or any kind of apology to her. It was more of, you know, oh, he's a good employee. And then he told me he hires a lot of black folks. <laughs> I said, okay. I don't know how that helps you, but that's what they wanted us to know, that they, they have African Americans working for them. It came up that the, the person who, the employee, was also another individual of color, but not black. Mm -hmm. Is it worthwhile, or would you be willing to have a conversation, if possible, about cultural competency within communities of color when it comes to black people and their feelings, if Woody's were to respond? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's actually a part of the, the meeting that we're, we're trying to have. We want an understanding. And, but I, I, I still want to say, he spelled darky correctly. That's all I have to say on that. And to the brother's question up here, we all know historically what the word darky means. You can just Google it, you know, from the days of slavery to now. The word symbolizes something in the black experience in America. So to summarize and review, uh, what is the reasonable expectation, uh, Ms. Darling, of the outcome? If, if, if it was ideal, if it was an ideal situation on the outcome? If it were ideal, um, I would just like to see honesty from the side of Woody's, to be honest about what's actually happened, and to be fair about responding to me about what's actually happened, so that I can respond. That's it. Any other questions? Any other questions? Right. We thank, thank you, you all. Thanks for being here. Thank you all.